Hi Rocketeers, I'm Charlie Garcia. Some of you may have recently watched the Transporter 7 launch. Three, two, one, ignition, engines full power, and lift off of Transporter 7. And seen something a little funny with the second stage engine. SpaceX flew a shorter than normal nozzle extension. And I wanted to briefly talk about why they may have chosen to do that. SpaceX is actually no stranger to smaller second stage nozzles. As going all the way back to the very first flight of the Falcon 9 program, SpaceX has been adjusting and tweaking their second stage nozzle. So why would anyone want to mess with their nozzle extension on a working rocket engine? The nozzle is one of the most important parts of a rocket engine for getting high performance. Higher performance means you can put more payload into space. One of the ways we calculate the performance from a rocket engine nozzle is by finding what's known as the expansion ratio. That's the area of the throat of the rocket engine to the exit area of the nozzle. The larger your expansion ratio, the faster the gas in your rocket nozzle will accelerate before it leaves. This gives you more thrust and better ISP. There's no such thing as a free lunch though, so by getting more ISP and more thrust, you also are reducing the exit pressure of the nozzle. If you use a low pressure nozzle in an atmosphere, you might lose performance, or even worse, the flow might separate and cause vortices and shock waves inside the rocket nozzle itself, possibly damaging or destroying it. For example, on the Merlin 1D engines used on the first stage, which are almost the exact same rocket engine, just with a different nozzle, the expansion ratio is only 16 to 1 versus 165 to 1 on most second stages. Another difference between the first and second stage nozzles is that the first stage nozzles are completely regeneratively cooled. That is, there's propellant flowing inside of the nozzle to keep it cool and stop it from melting. There's not enough propellant to cool the much larger nozzle on the second stage engine, so instead it's radiatively cooled. That is, it literally glows the heat away into the cold darkness of space. In order to get good radiative cooling, you need to let the nozzle get really hot. The amount of heat you radiate away is a function of the fourth power of temperature. So at low temperatures, you don't radiate very much heat at all, whereas at high temperatures, you radiate tons of heat. Rocket scientists have been looking for good materials to use for radiative cooling for a long time. The alloy that SpaceX uses is called C-103, and it was developed by NASA during the Apollo program, for the Surface Module Propulsion System, and it's used by all kinds of rocket engines nowadays. The rocket thrusters I build at Agile Space Industries use C-103 as well. C-103 is made from mostly niobium with about 10% hafnium, about 2% titanium, and a little bit of zirconium. Increasing demand for C-103 and other alloys using the alloying elements, as well as the conflict in Ukraine uh, that has led to embargoes against Russia, have significantly impacted the availability of some of these materials, and therefore made them much more expensive. So it makes sense that SpaceX is looking for a way to save on this rare, difficult to get, and very expensive alloy. Most missions flying on SpaceX's Falcon 9 don't use the full payload capacity of the rocket. On missions where SpaceX can reuse the first stage without all of the performance on the second stage, it might make sense to save almost $100,000 or more by going for some cheaper, shorter nozzles instead of the full-size ones. Another idea I heard from one of my engineer friends actually harkens back to some of the earliest SpaceX launches. On the very first COTS Demo 1 mission, uh, the nozzle that SpaceX was using on its Falcon 9, which was much smaller at the time, had some cracks on the aft end of it. And so they literally took tin snips to shorten the nozzle to get rid of the cracked section, and they flew the rocket just like that. It's possible that Transporter 7 was a clever way that some engineer found of using some otherwise non-conforming hardware on a low-performance mission. So it's pretty obvious that saving on the expensive alloy makes it attractive to use a shorter nozzle, but why might you not be able to use a shorter nozzle? Well, it's obvious that it reduces your performance, but if you have the performance margin to spare, there are still challenges with using a shorter nozzle. You see, most of the heat that's picked up by the nozzle is actually added close to the throat. This is for a variety of factors, but ultimately that means that the lower portions of the nozzle are actually helping to radiate heat away from the hotter sections of the nozzle, which are closer to the top of the rocket engine. Because the heat flux is lower at larger expansion ratios, axial heat conduction from hotter parts of the nozzle allow larger nozzles to keep the higher sections of the nozzle cooler than you would otherwise. So counterintuitively, if you shorten the rocket nozzle, it may actually get hotter. SpaceX does have at least one trick to help with this though. The Merlin vacuum engine uses a gas generator cycle, which normally dumps overboard a bunch of cold gas, well, cold relatively speaking. SpaceX pulled a trick from the F1 rocket engine used on the Saturn V rocket, and on their Merlin vacuum engine, they re-inject this gas from the gas generator into the nozzle to create a cool boundary layer to protect the niobium from the rest of the hot exhaust products. Even with this boundary layer, the niobium gets white hot on most missions, but without it, it might melt. I guess only time will tell if this was a one-off use of non-conforming hardware or SpaceX continuing to iterate and improve on its venerable Falcon family. Even as Starship's getting ready to fly its first flight here in just a couple of days. Hope you guys found this interesting. Until next time, good luck and Godspeed.